Walker lost Walker, to the uh, yeah, yeah the Walker early versus play. yeah Xiao Hyung. Yeah, so it, yeah, so it was uh, the the early cheese, and we'll, we'll see how Hasu does against Murder. So far, um, it, it's like football in in terms of you know some players may be better than others, but on any given Monday night, um, one player can be another, and especially since this is a King of the Hill best of one style, as. And Hasu will be going up against Murder. I believe Hasu is the Canadian Protoss versus... Is Murder American? I'm not quite sure, though. I know the chat was calling for their Canadian VVV player, so I'll let you enter the players. I'm going to AFK you 30 seconds here to grab a drink of water. All right, so we have Hasu spawning here as the green Protoss player at the 12 o'clock position. Meanwhile, close by air spawns here, Murder as the purple Terran, opening up with the good luck, have fun, Close by air should be really interesting. Um, Protoss players can, if they utilize Colossi, can simply walk down this cliff and get into their opponent's base in just a matter of seconds. So um, we've always said close by air, but it's also close by cliff for Reapers and Colossi. And we may see that, especially if Murder goes for that typical Terran bio um, with Marines, Marauders, and Vikings. Now, um, apparently Hasu very happy that Murder is back in the game and and basically saying don't go anywhere. It's always nice to have some old fellow players just getting back into the swing of things as we now see Hasu opening up with a gateway and going to be doing a bit of scouting. I definitely agree with the fact that it's nice to have Murder back. Uh, he was one of my favorite players in the early weeks of Wednesday Night Starcraft, the early months, in fact. As you saw, he's just, you know, a really strong Terran when VVV was really known for its Terran play with Murder and Angry uh, and then adding Rough. So it's nice to have a balanced lineup, but it's cool to see these uh, these strong VVV Terran players. And Murder was definitely at the head of the pack back in his day and now sort of making that triumphant return. And we'll see what sort of damage he's able to do in upcoming weeks. But right now, up against a teammate and... Uh, Yep, yeah, we haven't really seen him play too many standard games so far tonight. Just uh, basically on the offensive and defensive end of cheese. So I'd like to see a macro game from him. All right, we'll see what's going to happen here. Is the probe just still wandering around? There is a, a pylon over here. It can warp in units onto the low ground. We'll see if that will come into play whatsoever as both players just scouting each other out and kind of interested in Hasu's builds or his building placement. The SimCity looks a little bit strange to me. Perhaps there's a reasoning behind this, not allowing Marines and Marauders to drop on one side and simply push through. But there is a very Artosis looking pylon powering most of the buildings there. Yeah, I mean, he only has two pylons so far, so you can't give him too much grief for that. I'm sure I'll add one or two uh, more so that the, the Artosis situation doesn't really happen. But that second pylon I love just as you said, sort of, uh, you know, having that area where you can warp in closer to your opponent's base, plus a bit of sight there to see if any Marines or SCVs are making their way across the field. But now he's spreading out his third pylon. So uh, we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see when he adds a second gas. I think that's going to be pretty telling whether he goes for more of the expansion play or some sort of tech. Yeah, and um, apparently something's wrong for murder, but um, it's, it's really important to to figure out timings and, and figure out what your opponent's trying to go for. Right now, both of these players have not established gas just quite yet. So it's it's not too out of the picture for both of these players to perhaps get into some, go into a very heavy macro style play, even though this is close by air or close by cliff. Colossi could easily come down, especially with that pylon set up where it is right by the cliff, and then just start walking inside the base with extended thermal lance and force Murder to get into a very heavy Viking count. Sorry, I'm quite distracted by the bunny for Hasso. <laughs> Murder, I guess, has some sort of issue where he is zooming in. And did you know, Kurta, if you zoom in, the replay will show you in your view zoomed in. I was playing a guy on ladder the other day, and I, uh, I went to look at his view to sort of see how it looked from his angle. And he was like zooming in constantly, and it showed on the replay. I was like, how do you play like this? Well, I, I know I occasionally zoom in, especially when I play against Protoss, because you can see observers that way. Like, huh. like you need to force a camera angle to move. So if you zoom in and zoom out, you can actually sometimes see the flicker of the observer, even if the observer is stationary. And it's, yep. a, it's a little bit easier to spot. 
and then I'll, I'll scan or sweep and, and take it down that way. Or I do the same thing with, with Dark Templars as well. If there's like a stationary Dark Templar and I don't quite know where it is, I can I can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel and then quickly find it and take it out. So bottom line, you're saying that the, the game really favors Terran and the fact that they don't really need to scan and they can see invisible units just by... Uh... You can do, and you can do it too. You can do it too. It, I don't need to see where the banshee is. I know where it is. It's shooting my probes. There's, there's no mystery to that. I'm, 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 I'm talking about observers. It's like if you uh, have an observer in your base, you're like, I know there's an observer somewhere. Uh, which overlord should I turn into an overseer? Oh, yeah. You know, my detector, my flying detector only takes 18 I, seconds to build. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So I suppose Terran don't have a monopoly on scro on scrolling in and out and the, the camera angle. Yes. I guess I was mistaken there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, rab rabid dislike for the uh, the lesser race of StarCraft Two shows once again. Uh, you, you know what? I, I think Zerg is starting to sh show how strong it truly is, and I think we're I think we're gonna have a lot of Zerg come in as the GSL winners in the coming weeks. Yeah, because so far we've had two, I guess, Fruit Dealer and uh, and Nesty, and then it's been all Terran. Uh, and MC. Yeah, well, well, yeah, and MC. It's like you, you don't even call it Protoss. Like and MC. It's like and yeah. MC. Two base Protoss. Yeah. All right. So the game once again back underway. Apparently, Hasu forgot to turn off, um, turn off the lights in his car, and now his car is dead. But it doesn't matter because he's playing StarCraft 2 right now. Yeah, so uh, back into this, we will have, it looks like Martyr walling off completely and actually putting a little pressure on uh, Is Hasu with the Zella and Probe combination. So maybe he was hoping to uh, get in there and maybe catch Murder teching a little bit with no full wall off. And I think that th this is something that Murder has learned. Uh, I mentioned it several weeks ago, is the new norm in this matchup is to wall off. You don't want your opponent to be able to poke up there and get any sort of scouting information. So we see he has walled off with the, uh, the supply depots. He's going to go down and try to take out the uh, the forces of Hasu. He was able to take down that one probe and the one zealot, but the uh, the Sarah are going to give him a little bit of trouble until he gets stim. Yeah, we'll see what's going to happen here. Murder with four Marines. And, and I hear a lot of people get slack for walling off, like, oh, it's such a noob thing to do, but... You know, sometimes the meta game just really is determined by being able to wall off being, and being able to make sure that the Protoss units um, that are generally stronger, um, you know, early in the game, don't eat through all of your Marines or the Zerg player isn't able to swarm you as Zerg is able to train up six Zerglings and one Zergling against one Marine in the early game. If they go head to head, um, I think the Zerglings usually win out more often than not once they can close in on that melee range. Well, I mean, I think the wall off against Zerg is definitely the uh, has been the norm for a while. But I know for a, uh, for the early part of StarCraft in in TVP, you didn't really wall off. You weren't so worried. You had a marine or two at the top of your ramp, and the probe couldn't really make it up. But uh, I think walling off, at least with supply depots, is probably the smart decision. As Murder doing a nice job checking for proxy pylons, wants to make sure that Hasu hasn't placed any on this side of the map yet to make it easier to warp units in close to his opponent. And Hasu does have that expansion up, and uh, Murder has his second orbital up as well, just now going to be landing it, so he knows no sort of early timings coming, about the 7 minute, 30 second mark. Anything would have hit by now, so he's going to feel good to land that uh, second orbital, taking down the, uh, the stalker there at the tower. All right, we'll see what Hasu's going to do. Hasu does suspect a, a large swarm of units now coming in, but it looks like Murder is just going to simply retreat. There is a probe off over here patrolling. It will spot the Orbital Command just as it's landing. The probe now knows that the expansion is up for Murder. Murder perhaps not wanting to tip that information as Hasu currently supply blocks 60 over 60 without a pylon warping in. Yeah, so it looks like we will have a macro game for Murder, so... It's exactly what I asked for. My only final request for tonight is to see battle cruisers, probably three three battle cruisers if I had my uh, my way. But hopefully at some point Ruff gets back in here and uh, does a crazy starport battle cruiser build. All right, we'll see what's going to happen as the Marine now trying to back off the Zealots and the Sentries. Um, a very very slow moving gateway unit gateway unit combination as there's no stalkers there, so they're not going to be able to chase. 
uh, but there are a decent enough number of sentries to perhaps split up the army as we do see an observer keeping track of the front door bunkers now being placed down by murder murder will have double bunkers here able to you know defend himself but we are do see the bunker busters in the immortals now being added and if the immortals are able to focus down the bunkers with force fields right behind it the bunkers will fall and this entire front door will be just pretty much wide open yeah we were talking about him a little bit earlier uh in mc being sort of the master of two base protoss timings and i think hasu definitely going to gear up for some sort of uh two base timing he's about that as fourth and fifth gate and he's got a robotics bay on the way as well so if he gets a proxy pylon he's gonna have these sentries creating or uh, banking a lot of energy so he's gonna have a ton of force fields to use against those bunkers um, looks like a scan going off there for murder taking out that observer observer before he does shuttle these uh, these medevacs across the way but Hasu is waiting for him there and this drop not gonna do anything yeah, there's still the Observer still sitting in that position right there on top of the barracks. They were not taken out. Medivacs now going to go ahead and park themselves at the Zelnaga Tower as a probe gets quickly destroyed there. Currently, Haas has seen that 88 food compared to 78. 44 probes compared to 41 SCVs. More Zealots now being added as it looks like this low ground or this pylon will end up falling to the Marines and the Marauders here. Yeah, that's one of the dangers of putting pylons sort of all over the map. Uh, is they can be taken down very easily by these uh, these Terran units once the medevacs give them high ground sight, but they're just so good in warping and, and seeing what's going on. So Hasu might actually replace that if he's going to put any sort of pressure on, but right now he's working on extended thermal lance before he even gets out his first Colossi. I'm not sure about that decision. We'll see what's going to happen here. He probably just wants to be able to push with that Colossi as, as quickly as possible. Now Chrono boosting it, and he's going to be Chrono boosting out the extended thermal lance in addition to the to the Colossi as the Marines and the Marauders take down a probe that was trying to establish up a third and now the Marines are going to simply push in here but that is a lot of sentries and you never really want to get in an engagement where one or two sentries can completely decimate your entire army. Yeah, yeah, I have to apologize to Hasso. It looks like the timing going to work out for some sort of two Colossus timing as long as he keeps uh, the Colossi chronoed here but typically see Protoss players start their Colossi before Extended Thermal Lance. Obviously, it's 200 gas for each, so you can get just more Colossi out if you start the Colossi earlier and then wait for the gas to uh, to start that uh, Extended Thermal Lance because Extended Thermal Lance really isn't good until you engage, so it's sort of like a wasted 200 gas until that, that moment when you finally do attack. So we'll see whether Hasu really takes advantage of it, still chronoing it out. Maybe expecting some sort of pressure coming? Yep, Murder now coming in with a drop. There is Marines and Marauders. One pylon does go down. Colossi now making their way over. Colossi Guardian Shield is up. And all of those units are forced to retreat. The Stalkers will be not go oh, down to 13 hit points and able to escape there. Uh, very, very nice. As another pressure coming in over here at the natural or the third base. Zealots and Immortals now making their way. In come the Force Fields. And now a hot pickup trying to save all those units. And it looks like half of the Marauders and Marines were destroyed there. Yeah, pretty decent job picking up those units. Uh, they were able to get a pylon, get a little bit of damage on that Nexus, almost forced to cancel. But Hasu's done a nice job of splitting his units. He knows his opponent is going for those drops. And he is, uh, he's doing a fine job of keeping units in both positions. In fact, all three bases have units. Right now, a little bit concerned. He doesn't have sort of those techie upgrades that we see in this matchup quite often. He went for the Colossus tech very quickly, so that means he doesn't have any forge upgrades, and he doesn't have any blink or charge yet. Blink just about a quarter of the way done, so he's not really going to be able to engage, and losing a Colossi there it sort of misrallied, perhaps, uh, in the center of the map. Not quite sure what that was going, or where that was going. Yeah, that, that was just a horrible, horrible mistake by Hasu. Hasu cannot afford to lose all those Colossi like that. And Murder doing a good job splitting up the units so that they wouldn't take actually that much splash damage. Yeah. Taking a look at the Harvester count now, 62 probes, 52 SCVs with three mules. The third base already completed by Murder, about to upgrade to an Orbital Command. And this is turning into your dream, a very heavy macro game. But 2-2 two, two upgrades underway while Hasu yeah. currently at 0-0. Zero, zero. The other thing is he's got a lot of uh, sentries and a lot of zealots, which are fine units in this matchup, but they're only really good if the zealots have charge to force kiting. 
or and you know really aggressive kiting. If the Terran doesn't or if the Protoss doesn't have charge, then the Terran can kite quite easily away from those units, especially with uh, a number of Marauders and having that concussive shell pretty cheap upgrade. So. I feel like Hasu can't really engage here. He doesn't have the upgrades for it. Just now adding a forge. He might be waiting for storm, but I'm not sure. He does have, it looks like three high Templar. They don't have enough energy for storm uh, quite yet. So he's going to be basically sitting back at home waiting for upgrades for a while. Yeah, we'll see what Hasu's going to do. Hasu um, actually wanted murder. To, he wants murder to engage him. So he has defender's advantage. And perhaps Murder, if he tries to over push himself here, Hasu will be able to just get constant reinforcements in those Colossi. You can see Triple Forge now coming in. So it looks like we're going to have weapons upgrade, armors upgrade, and shield upgrades as well as Hasu really playing catch up now. Yeah, it looks like a Wood Prism coming out. And this is, I, I guess, a good move by Hasu. He can't really engage straight up. He's behind in upgrades all at, in every, every upgrade, basically. Charge just now underway. And like you said, he's just working on this Triple Forge upgrade. So the War Prism is going to allow him to put a little pressure on. And it looks like we might have a little bit of engagement here. But I imagine on this uh, ramp, Force Field's going off, catching a decent part of the Terran army. Uh, and Murder might think twice about going up that ramp. Yeah, Mur Murder now once again trying to retrain up all of those units. The Mar what Medivacs, Vikings, Marines, and Ghosts all being trained up back at home. So they're not going to be part of that army for quite some time. Meanwhile, a High Templar inside the Warp Prism. So the Warp Prism is nice. um, going to be able to get off some decent size storms. But you have to be careful about that. Vikings able to shoot down a Warp Prism in a matter of right. seconds. As the Vikings now counter your High Templar and the Colossi. Yeah, basically two for one there. Uh, and we do have eight Vikings on the field, so initially they're going to focus down these Colossi. It looks like a few EMPs do go off doing a decent job. Great surface area on those EMPs. And Murder doing a fine job at the top of this ramp, taking on all comers again without charge. Those Zealots so slow with the uh, concussive shell, and Hasu just sighs and gives the GG. And I think things were maybe a little bit out of order there for Hasu. He went for the Colossi very early. He went for the extended thermal lance very early. And I feel like he had to hit a timing with that because he was just so behind in upgrades. Typically, we see charge lots and we see, you know, very aggressive forge upgrades in this matchup, but a little bit late coming out for Hasu and he was just never able to engage in the late game.